Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to yet another Gunpla review, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the 1-100 scale Gundam Gushion. As always, there's the sides of the box with all the info about what's in there, and as for the RRP, this time it's a little bit expensive and will set you back about 5,000 yen, but this is one big box. What you'll notice once you get this out of the box and built is that it's pretty big, but not upwardly big, just outwardly big. There is a quick comparison beside a standard sized Gundam and as you can see the Oryx 78 II is slightly taller than the Gushion. The Gushion really does have a real sumo frog look to it and I do think it could have benefited from longer legs it would look a lot cooler. But I guess it is based on a Gundam frame so that is what you get. But you really do appreciate its size when you put it beside the high grade, it just looks humongous in comparison. You will also notice that there are a lot of other differences between this and the high grade. It's not just an upscale kit. For one, it's got a whole lot more outer detail. You'll also notice a lot of other structural differences here as well, especially in regard to the Gundam inner frame. The shoulder armor is connected completely differently and you can see those Gundam Barbatos looking hip parts through the armor. I do have to admit though that the grey parts and the purple parts of the Gundam inner frame and the Gushion extra parts just kind of look a little bit odd together. A little bit mismatched. And finally there's the size comparison of the 1100 scale Gushion with the Barbatos and the greys. Of course you know this isn't everything that comes in the box so this is all we're going to be taking a look at this time around. What we've got here is the Gushion hammer pretty much the same as we've seen before a big slab of grey plastic. Sadly, however, the arms, especially the wrists, just cannot hold this thing up. As well as that, we've got the submachine gun. This is pretty plain as well, just in grey plastic, but you can pull in and out the stock on the back here. And last off, we've got these two hand grenades. Also, having just one back for two hands is a nightmare just waiting to happen. As for the articulation, it's not the greatest. A lot of the joints have very limited range of movement, and a lot of the armor does get in the way you're not really going to get a whole lot of dynamic poses out of this thing. The best you could probably hope for is just one big wide-legged pose where he's holding the hammer and that is about it. On top of that, in this form, the build quality feels quite poor and that's not something I've had to say about Gunpla in a long time. The joints are incredibly weak and it falls over really easily. I find that the feet just fall off all the time. As for the rest of it, it's pretty much solid enough but it has a really hollow feel to it because as you can see, it essentially is hollow. In there you can see that inner frame, I'll open that up a bit more so we can see more of that. With the back off, you can see that the Gundam inner frame is in here, but it doesn't extend all the way over to the arms. However, there are these interesting extension parts that connect the body to the shoulder parts up here. So that is pretty interesting. Also, the frame doesn't extend down into the lower section of the leg. That is just these purple parts. So really all we have of the Gundam inner frame is this inside the arms. Inside here we have parts of the waist unit, but it's expanded again upon with these purple parts out to here. So the inner design of this is kind of interesting. And there it is what it looks like from the front with the arms attached on there. So that is pretty cool. So that is it for my review of the 1-100 scale Gundam Gushion from Iron-Blooded Orphans. So far I'm not entirely impressed, the outside of this definitely feels completely no grade, and the use of the Gundam frame inside of it just kind of feels a little bit gimmicky. It's got a few loose parts and a few loose joints, and the articulation in general is just poor. I really feel like this guy just isn't really done yet, and needs to be put back into the oven. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in part two.